Lynx decided to do the disaggregation model, really, really for the two, two main factors. One, we know that the, the, the marketplace is changing, the, the prices of peering is coming down. Uh, and, and two, we needed to look at new infrastructure, uh, a new way of scaling. We, we feel that by adopting the disaggregated model, we can drive better cost base into the peering infrastructure, which we can then pass on to our members as benefits in reducing port prices. For Lynx members, adopting this new technology will bring many benefits. We'll talk a little bit more uh, about the, the various technicalities of how EVPN multi-homing can benefit the membership. But essentially, we're going to be driving better cost models into the, into the network infrastructure. We'll be able to then pass on uh, reduced port fees, and we'll also be able to have stability and scalability that will benefit the members for many years to come. So EVPN, Ethernet VPN, um, is a new method of actually controlling an Ethernet switch network. Uh, the old technology required the switches snooping on traffic, figuring out that if traffic was going from port 3, then the return traffic had to go back to port 3, or whatever the port was. Um, and that is a bit ad hoc and can cause uh, complications and challenges on the network. Um, whereas instead, uh, with EVPN, everything is programmed and all the switches talk to each other, synchronize, um, so that it is a lot more predictable, a lot more stable, and it then allows um, extra features to be built um, on that information. So we chose to work with um, edge core networks and IP infusion for two reasons, primarily for their experience. Edgecore are a long established um, Ethernet switch manufacturer and IP Infusion are again a long established uh, software stack provider. They had the technical expertise uh, to take us through the project. But equally important, they shared our vision. They actually believed in what we were trying to do in the in this disaggregated solution, the potential for the market, and were willing to go through the journey with us um, and put the effort to get us to success. Looking at the project, there have been a number of challenges that we've faced over the last two years. Um, one of the key ones has been around getting our automation to work. So we'd already adopted uh, a fully automated configuration platform for London One, and one of our key drivers for the new network was to make sure that we deliver the same automation across that platform as well. The biggest challenge was at the beginning, we knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know exactly what was possible. So it was quite an extensive um, learning process together as we really got to find uh, what the scope was. And then building on that, just going through testing, getting all the, all the bugs, all uh, the little niggles out so that when we migrate uh, to the network, we are confident we'll offer a good service day one. So we learnt during the migration phase um, that we had to switch from a development and uh, proof of concept mindset into an operational mindset for the, the, the three companies. I think that was quite challenging because it was new for us, it was new for IP Infusion, it was new for Edgecore in how we adopt this new operation model. But we've got there. We feel that we have a, a workable model now. We feel that we're performing well and we've got great support from IP Infusion who are our lead uh, point of contact for any operational issues. Currently on London 2, uh, we're, we're reaching, uh, as we get into June, at the, the end of the member migrations where we've taken all of the members from the old Extreme Networks LAN and moved them onto the new. IP Infusion Edge Core LAN. We have a second phase where we're going to be adding further te technical capability to the LAN as, as we go through the year, but at the moment we're excited to complete the, the uh, migrations. Mm -hmm.